All right, so good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday, um, happy October. It's hard to believe that it's October, but it's a gorgeous day. I love this sort of crispness in the air, but it's still warm with the sunshine. It's a really nice time of year. So thank you for being with us this morning. We're very excited. Mike is a fairly new member to the chamber and I've sort of heard bits and pieces um, of his um, concepts and business and history and all of that, but I'm excited to learn a bit more today. I just want to let everyone know we do have time for question and answer. So after Mike gives um, a little bit of information to all of you, we'll open things up. So there is a Q&A button that should be either the top or the bottom of your screen if you hover over, or you can use the chat feature. And I will facilitate those when the time comes. But for now, welcome, Mike. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, Kate. It's great to be here. And I will turn things over to you. All right, great. Um, so yeah, first again, thank you to Kate. Um, Lori has actually had some uh, input into this too, so thank you to her, thank you to the member, and a big thank you to you guys who are spending some, some of your precious time with me. Um, I understand running a business is hectic, I understand that it, it takes a lot of time, so I appreciate you being here. Um, and I also love knowing that there are people out there that want to improve their business, and I hope to help you do that today. Um, just a few quick housekeeping things, um, please. Um, I'm here to help you. My passion is helping. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could um, just kind of close your tabs and give me 30 to 35 minutes of your time. Um, that's how it's going to work. I'm going to give you about 30 to 35 minutes of a lot of information. Um, I hope very helpful information. Um, and then there'll be a Q&A period afterwards. Um, some stuff was sent out beforehand. It can help you follow along. Um, as far as questions, I hope that you can just keep a pad and paper, uh, a pen and paper next to you. Um, if I say something that strikes a chord or a question comes up during the webinar, uh, please write it down. Um, questions and answers, great things come, come out in Q&A periods. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. So um, without further ado, um, just a, a quick summary about me, I am passionate about helping people get more from their business. Um, and where does that come from? Uh, I grew a business, myself and my brother um, and, and, and our family, uh, over 20 years from uh, me as the first employee to over 500 employees. Um, it was great, awesome experience, um, learned a lot of things and we obviously did a lot of things right. Um, but we also had our share of train wrecks and messing up. Um, and as anybody knows, you learn a lot more from the train wrecks and things like that. Um, so, and during that, just working with my suppliers and working with other customers that are businesses, um, talking about businesses, I love learning about businesses. I'm always amazed at different businesses I learn about. I just met one. Um, I'm, a, I'm a strong Christian. I believe God put me here to help people with their businesses and help people in any way I can. Um, but I, I ran into a business in my Christian C12 group um, who is a, they are a, um, they, they tend or they uh, help landscape cemeteries. And I just, when he said that, I, it just kind of hit me as, you know, I never thought of a business um, around that or, or a business that, that does that. Um, and it I just, just, just fascinates me to learn about businesses. Um, so through that, and then about 15 years into my company, um, we realized that we needed a lot more help. We, we needed better people around us. So we brought in a, a, um, a CFO who actually brought in something called EOS, which is the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Let me give you a very quick overview of that in a few minutes. Um, but what it what I found it did and helped me as a business person is it helped me um, combine my flighty and sometimes visionary and crazy ideas all the time way of doing business. You know that's kind of how I conduct myself. I, I'm, I'm a little bit all over the place. Um, but what I found in EOS or the Entrepreneurial Operating System kind of gave me structure and and and, and helped me um, organize my business better um, and. What I found is after running my business successfully for many years, I felt I wanted to help more people um, and combining my experience with that EOS helps me learn about, uh, meet new business people and help them get more from their business. Um, as I've learned about businesses, the, the thing that I've really seen is that every business starts with a great idea, okay? Um, 
I mean, my great idea when we started 1A Auto, which is the business that my brother and I ran, was let's sell auto parts online. And in 1998, we were kind of one of the first business to, businesses to do that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe a landscaper goes to work and he's a smart person, self-starter, and doesn't like his boss and realizes, well, you know, I can do a better job and starts his own company. Um, you know, that's kind of an idea. That's a vision that starts out. Um, maybe um, you're a, a computer programmer that meets uh, a laser engineer and you decide, hey, we could combine these things and make a great product that could help solve somebody's needs, right? So that's just an idea, a thought, a vision that you have at first. Um, but what frustrates me is I, I see that people have all these great visions. And I think what frustrates a lot of people, they have this vision, they start forward with a company to um, support that vision or to execute it, but then they never really communicate that vision. That vision stays in their head. They do a bad job of communicating it out, um, letting the people around them understand what that vision is. And that's kind of where the title of this webinar comes from is what they end up doing is they end up working in their business all the time and not communicating that vision and being a leader of their vision. Uh, great quote from Harry Beckwith, uh, people don't lead, purposes lead, and visions are purposes. Um, so what I want to do is just do a really quick um, summary of the US model. Lori sent it out. You can follow along visually, or I have my wonderful uh, whiteboard version here. Um, the EOS or the entrepreneurial operating system, and what I've found is that owners, um, entrepreneurs, they just struggle with a hundred different problems all at once. And what, what we found is to the extent that you can strengthen six key components of your business, those issues and problems kind of fall into place and go away. All right, so those six key components, the one we're gonna talk about the most, the first one is vision, all right? Vision, a strong vision is one that everybody in the company understands where you're going and how you're going to get there, okay? So if you think about that person had that idea and started that company and then finds themselves just working in the company, not really on the company, they have this vision, they start the company, but then if they don't communicate it out, people don't understand that vision and they don't understand how to work towards it. So having a strong vision is everybody in the company from the person that starts it down to the last person they hired understands where their company's going and how it's going to get there. The next component that every company needs that you need to work to improve is your people component because you cannot achieve a great vision. You cannot build a great landscaping company you cannot build a great laser engineering company. You cannot build a great realty company. You can't achieve that great vision without putting great people around yourselves. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it, but simply great people around yourselves means having the right people, the people that you enjoy working with, the people that treat people the same way that you do, the people that treat problems the same way you do, having the right people around you that are doing jobs that are to their unique ability. So they're having the right people in the right seats, two simple concepts. All right, next key component is data, all right? Having a strong data component is simply um, running your business based on facts and figures, subjective numbers, not just the seat of your pants or not just the ego and emotion that drives a lot of businesses. Strengthening your data component is running your business based on facts and figures, not just on the subjective things like ego and emotion. As you strengthen your vision, people, and data components, you'll, you'll clarify your company and things will become more transparent. Problems, um, imperfections, impurities will fall out and you'll need a great issues component to dig to the root cause of those issues, all that stuff that kind of hits you on a day-to-day -day basis, what is actually causing that? Dig to that root cause, all right? Come up with an action to solve it and make it go away forever, all right? 
then very quickly, the fifth key component is process. Okay, having a strong process component is simply having a business where everybody understands how to do the major things, the key things, the right way, the same way every time. All right, and then the sixth key component that is important to strengthen in your business is your traction component. And traction is executing on a day in, day out basis with discipline and accountability towards that vision. So we're gonna go now to vision and how strengthening your vision, how important it is, how powerful it can be. Um, I'm gonna use, you're gonna probably hear me use rowing a lot as an analogy, rowing a boat. Um, think about, let's just take an easy one, that, that landscaper that starts a business, you know, he's, he's frustrated with his boss, his boss doesn't treat him well, he knows he can run a better business and do a better job, so he starts his own company, all right? So that's his, that's his vision at first, is just to do a better, build a better business than what he was working for. Um, and that's a common, common way people start things out. So he goes out, he takes his truck that he has, and he maybe gets a loan and buys some equipment. And, and very quickly, you know, he, he always did a great job. So a lot of the accounts that he worked for before come to him and say, I'd, I'd rather have you mow my lawn or, or tend, my, tend my grounds. So he quickly gets 10 clients, right? But it's just him. So he's doing things the way he wants to do it. And things are getting done the right way. He's rowing the boat. He's going in one direction, all right? So then he decides to bring people on. And so that's where we're gonna come up with um, the first kind of question. What, what we do or what you, you can do, what you can do to strengthen your vision, define it and clarify it is answer eight simple questions. And these are on that VTO that Lori sent out. They're kind of highlighted in gray. If you answer these eight simple questions, they will clarify and solidify your vision core values, core focus, 10-year target, marketing strategy, three-year picture, one-year plan, quarterly rocks, and issues list. And you can see these first three are about a big, long-range vision, all right? Core values, core focus, 10-year target. These next four are about starting to bring that vision into a strategic plan, a marketing strategy, a three-year picture, a one-year plan, okay? And then these two are more about bringing that plan down to the ground. So by answering eight questions, you can see it's a easy, simple way to create a two-page document. If you have that document in front of you, you can pay, create a two-page document that lays out your plan and strategy for the next three to 10 years. All right, so let's take um, we'll call him Jimmy. He's the landscaper. And Jimmy starts his business. He realized quickly that he gets 10 accounts and he wants to do more. Um, so the first question, if Jimmy answers it, are what are what are my core values? All right. Core values are a set of guiding principles. All right. You may say, well, what do core values have to do with the vision? Well, vision is where you're going and how you're getting there. You need great people around you. To, to attain that vision. So having core values that define the people that you want to put around you um, is, a, is a key component. Core values become a filtering mechanism for attracting people that you want and repelling people that you don't want. So Jimmy, with core values, he decides his three core values are gonna be hardworking, self-starting, and attention to detail, all right? so. Let's go through a scenario where, where Jimmy says, all right, I've got these 10 accounts now, I wanna bring on more, so I need more people. Well, uh, one of his accounts um, says, you know what, my son Daryl is looking for a job. Could he go to work for you, all right? So there's two different scenarios that we could work out here to, to kind of illustrate core values. So Jimmy says, okay, I need help. All right, so here's the first scenario. Jimmy doesn't use core values. He just says, okay, I need help and tell Daryl to show up tomorrow, all right? So in that scenario, three things could happen. Daryl could show up and be a great employee that Jimmy's looking for and helps Jimmy grow the business. That's the ideal scenario, but unfortunately that doesn't happen very often. More often what happens is the following two scenarios. All right, Daryl is an okay employee, but there's issues 
and Jimmy is frustrated in dealing with him and he spends more time dealing with Daryl's issues than he does running the business. And then the, the, another, the other scenario is Daryl is a train wreck and it takes Jimmy a couple of weeks to figure that out and then he has to let him go and he's just wasted two weeks of his life dealing with a train wreck that he didn't need to deal with. If Daryl uses core values as a filtering mechanism, he can say to the father, once the father makes a suggestion, okay, that sounds good. I'm looking for somebody that's hardworking, self-starting, and has good attention to detail, right? So now the father can say, wait a minute, that's kind of not my son. Maybe he's not quite right for you. Or the father can say, well, you know what? That is my son. I think he would work out, right? So the following, the, those three scenarios can still play out. Jimmy could be a train wreck. I mean, I'm sorry, Daryl could be a train wreck, but Jimmy has kind of tried to filter that out before with the father. Okay? And if he is a train wreck, since Jimmy knows he's looking for somebody hardworking, self-starting, and attention to detail, he can see very quickly on day one whether or not Daryl actually fits those three core values. All right? The other two scenarios, Daryl is hardworking, self-starting, and attention to detail means he becomes a great employee. The most common scenario, though, is that middle, where Daryl's a pretty good hard worker, and he even gets going, but he doesn't have great attention to detail. Well, since Jimmy knows that that's what he's looking for, he can have a good conversation around those core values and either help Daryl improve or point out that Daryl's not quite right for his company and move him on. So core values as a filtering mechanism to bring people around you to help you achieve that vision. Core focus, all right, great story I have is the um, British rowing team, right? British rowing team had not won a gold medal since 1912, all right? So in 2000, or actually just a little bit before 2000, not before 2000, but leading up to 2000, the team got together and they put their core focus in play. They asked one simple question, does it make the boat faster? Right. This became their filtering mechanism for every decision that they make. And that's what your core focus is. Your core focus is what are you really good at? What do you want to do? And it becomes a filtering mechanism for every decision you make. All right. So in the British rowing team, they said, does it make the boat faster? Do these new shirts make it faster? Do the oars make it faster? Does this person that we're bringing in make the boat faster? All right, so defining your core focus, figuring out what your sweet spot is um, and, and communicating it out is a filtering mechanism, filtering your decisions around that. That's, that's what core focus is. It's what we call your sweet spot. You think of, a, think of a baseball or a golf ball, when you hit it in the right spot, it goes in the direction you want and it goes as far as you want, all right? The core focus is your sweet spot. It's a filtering mechanism. Think of that British rowing team does it make the boat faster? What is your core focus for your business? Okay. Um, you know, for in, the, in our landscaping example, Jimmy says he wants to be the go-to landscaper in the Nashua area. Right. That's his core focus. And every decision he makes, okay, does buying this new truck help me get there? Does this piece of equipment versus this piece of equipment help me get there? He starts using that core focus to filter his decisions to, to reach that vision, all right? And then the third part of that big long-term vision is a 10-year target. 10-year target is a big motivating idea. Um, I kind of like to say that one of our successes at Y Auto was I, we accidentally set a 10-year target. Now, a 10-year target, we, we use 10 years because it's kind of where it averages out. It doesn't have to be 10, it's just long range. It could be five, it could be 30 but it's just a big idea that motivates and energizes people and gets them thinking differently. Um, when my brother and I were kind of sitting around talking about what we wanted to do with this online auto parts company, we just said, well, let's, let's just set a goal of $100 million in revenue in six years. And I will admit we did not make that goal, but the mistake I kind of made was I went in the next day and I was signing up for some new accounts and stuff and anything that wasn't like a financial or a a propriety account, I made the password 100M for 100 million in 6Y. Um, and what happened is as I started bringing people in like a year later, 
because um, it took me a year and a half on my own just to get the thing going. But as I started bringing people in, they had to log into these sites and they would, I would give them the password and they'd be like, well, what, what's that mean? And I'd have to explain to them, well, it's a hundred million in six years. And they'd say, well, what do we do now? And I'd kind of laugh because I'd be like, well, this year we're going to do 200,000. But then they'd start thinking, okay, we're doing 200,000 now. We want to do a hundred million in six years. This is going to be different. What do, we, what do we need to do differently? So that 10 year target is a motivating idea. So for, for, our, for Jimmy, our, our landscaper, um, maybe it's, he's got 10 accounts now, maybe in 10 years, he wants to have 120 accounts or something like that, or maybe it's 50 accounts. It doesn't have to be a huge goal. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever you want to accomplish. Okay, but it's a big motivating goal. So now, if you think of Jimmy, and he brings people on and he lets them know, these are my core values and he, he surrounds himself with people that live those core values. He lets them, he makes them understand what their focus is to be the, the, the go-to landscaper in the Nashua area. And he lets them understand what his 10-year target, what their 10-year target is. They understand that they have to think differently and this is a growing business. Everybody's rowing in the same direction. If he doesn't do that, as he brings people onto the boat, you know, maybe Johnny's rowing this way, maybe Susie's rowing this way, Daryl might be rowing backwards, and the boat's not going anywhere. But if you're communicating these three, and in total the eight, you get everybody rowing in the same direction, and that creates power. Okay. So those are the ones that I want to spend the most, the most time on. I'll go through the other ones a little quicker, but marketing strategy is also communicating the who do you want to reach, who exactly is your market. You cannot be all things to all people. And then how, what, what do you want to say to them? And if you have that VTO right there with you, you can see there's four parts. There's the list or your target market, the who you want to reach. There's your three uniques, which is what you want to say, what sets you apart from the competition, what makes you the go-to landscaper in the Nashua area? Um, and then there is your proven process. Not everybody uses a proven process, but, but laying out your proven process shows customers how you will take them from a great lead to a lifelong customer. Um, and then the last part is a guarantee. Not everybody uses a guarantee, but guarantee is some, just a statement that, um, it reduces angst and anxiety for a person doing business with you. You know, for, for Jimmy, our, our example in landscaping, it could be, you know, you'll be happy with your first mow or it's free. You know, just something that gets people kind of in the door. All right. And then we start taking that vision and really bringing it down to the ground. Once we know these four, you, once you know these four, your, your vision, you know who you are at your core with your core values, you know what you're really good at with your focus, you know where you're going long-term with that big goal, that 10-year target, and you know how you're gonna get there with your marketing strategy. You create a three-year picture, five to 15 bullet points that just kind of create a picture in everybody's mind of what the company's gonna look like in three years. And Jimmy, in our example, you know, now he's one truck and, and, and 10 accounts with one employee. In three years, he wants to be um, three trucks with seven employees and have uh, 25 accounts you know, on that way to that 100 account goal. All right, so it's just bullet points that start to create a picture because when you can create a picture in the mind's eye of your people, right, it's just a whole lot more likely that you're going to get there. Then you really start bringing it down with a one-year plan. All right, one-year plan is three to seven bullet points. What are the what are the three to seven things, the most important things that you need to get done in the next year in order to set yourself up for success for that three-year picture and eventually that 10-year big long-range goal? Bringing it down further, you answer the question, each quarter, what are my priorities? What do I need to get done this quarter in order to set myself up for the one-year plan? Okay. And then eight is the issues list, all right? This is the stuff that's hitting you upside the head every day. The, the stuff that's holding you back from success, the stuff that you just run around and trying to react to. Get that stuff out of your head and down on paper so you can take care of it. All right. And you may think, well, 
this all sounds good, but how long does it take? This, this stuff, if you work on this, it will take you a few hours to get to here. This stuff, you're doing more on it on a daily basis. You need to spend two years, I mean, I'm sorry, two years. You need to spend two days a year reviewing all this and coming up with your one year plan, okay? You need to spend one day a quarter coming up with your rocks, what's, what's important. And then on this issues list, all you need to do is spend 90 minutes a week, 90 minutes a week thinking about what are the issues that are holding me back and how can I solve them? So if you total that up, okay, that is five days a year, five days a year and 90 minutes a week. If you do that effectively, you will be a great leader of your business. You'll be leading your business, not just working in your business all the time. Okay, so answering those eight questions, clarifying, solidifying your vision, all right, and then communicating it out, that's important, okay? It doesn't do any good to have a vision in your head. You have to communicate it out, and you can communicate it out through quarterly meetings. You can communicate it out um, through your 90 minute meetings. You can just communicate it out by telling people when they live those core values thanking them, congratulating them, telling them about an action that supported their marketing strategy. Okay? Just communicating it out, talking to people so that they will live your vision along with you. Um, so that is kind of the 30 minutes, I hope, of very good content. Um, I am happy to answer any questions um, or delve into anything. We, it looks like we have another 30 minutes. So um, let's open it up. Well, so I have a question for you, Mike. Um, sure. What sort of, where do people get hung up? Like, you know, you make it sound so simple and of course five days, right? But um, someone assigned me recently to meditate for two minutes a day. And this was a week ago and I'm going to start, right? Like I, uh, when we talked about it, I was like, oh yeah, I could do that two minutes. But like, you yeah, have to be intentional. So it sounds simple, but where do people get hung up or how do they sort of start? That's, that's the most difficult part. I mean, obviously, that's the most difficult part. Uh, when I say it, and it's so common, that goes to the fact that it's so common that people have an idea, they start a business, um, but then they just find themselves working in the business, not on the business, because they never communicate out um, that idea. Um, so, you know, where do people start? If they have, if, the, if our participants have that two page document, that BTO, the vision traction organizer that I emailed out, start by putting aside, you have to put aside 60 minutes a week at least, all right, 60 minutes a week to work on your business. Um, the, what I can say, what I, what I don't want to do too much is my job, that's what I do. You can, you can, you can also hire me and that's my job is to coach you through this whole process and hold you accountable to getting there. Um, that's, that's one option, but people, they have to take the time. You have to believe that, um, you you have to believe that spending time working on your business is going to save you time on the backside. It just, it just has to be something that you have to convince yourself. Um, I'm actually a, uh, like I, I said, I'm a Christian. Um, I wasn't doing my morning time with God and I was in a, I was starting to get into a bad place. And I found that being intentional and, and getting up at five 30 and spending that hour has, it has improved my life so much. And it's the same thing with a business. You have to, you have to set aside time to think about if you're a business owner, you are not just creating a job for yourself. You are creating an organization and you have to work on that organization. It requires more than just going and doing the tasks that need to get the job done. And is this different at all? What if someone doesn't foresee them having a team, right? If What if it's just the model is sort of, you know, one person shop? Like, is this still relevant? I know some of the pieces, right? You're not necessarily yes. communicating your vision to your team. Maybe you're communicating it externally, but what, what makes it a little bit different in that way? Um, well, so if you're, it, it, it's all about what you want to create, right? Um, 
if you're a one man team, yes, this works. It, it clarifies for you. If you answer these eight questions, it clarifies why you're doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, also, you know, if you're a one man shop, you have to answer the question, do I want to spend 40 hours a week being a one man shop? Do I want to spend 80 hours a week being a one man shop? Do I want to spend 120 hours a week being a one man shop? Um, if you want to get from 100 hours to something more manageable like 60, 50, or 40, the more people you let know about this, your, your vendors, even your customers, they will help you. I, that's what I found through, through, uh, through when we started doing this with the 1A Auto business. I started communicating this even to our vendors in Taiwan and stuff, and they loved it, and they, they understood it, and they, they actually started thinking about how they do things to help us you know, reach, reach our goals and reach what we want to do. So for, yes, it's very important for, for a one man shop to have, these are just the basics. They're the building blocks of a business. So um, is all of it, you know, surrounding yourself with the right people in the right seats. Maybe that's not person, but based on that, you know, if you're a one man shop, what do you like to do? What, what tasks, what seats do you like to fill? You maybe you like to sell, but maybe you don't like to deliver as much. Well then bring in an outside consultant or a resource from outside that does that piece that you don't like. In order, if you want to grow your business, that's that's what you have to look at it in terms of. Well, right, and there's sort of that Venn diagram, right? Because there may be things that you don't like doing, but you're actually good at them. And then there may be things that you don't mind doing, but it's really not sort of where your strength lies, right? So I would imagine it's sort of figuring out, shuffling around those pieces too, um, and determining, right, what do you, at least initially, what do you really need some help with? And what are things that maybe, you know, you just sort of have to suck it up and get done? Yeah, that's that's a very good point. And I think people find themselves doing that a lot. They're 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 doing the things that they they feel like they have to do, but they don't like doing, um, and not realizing that if they figured out a different way to 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 either do that. One, ask yourself, do you really have to do this? Um, and then two, there are resources. There's plenty of resources. There's finance resources. I I hate doing bookkeeping and you kind of know that I'll, I'll be open and honest i still have a 20 dollar open invoice to you guys because i just it, when i sit down and write down a check i'm like ah, i'll just do something you know and what you have to understand what people need to understand is that there are other resources out there and when you let go of that stuff that you don't like to do you'll find yourself doing more of what you do like to do and either you know you're creating more revenue if that's what you want to do or maybe you just want to make your business more profitable or you're just growing yourself and understanding what you're good at. Right. Um, and so certainly I want to allow for our participants to ask questions, but I have another one. I used to teach at UNH in Manchester and in particular a senior seminar. So it was sort of the capstone class for business students, the last thing they took before they graduated. And we would always talk about having your counsel, right? So at the time, you have to, we would encourage them to figure out like who's in that council, who's going to sort of give them quality feedback and not just maybe nudge them towards what they think they should do, right? Like who's going to be honest with them? And do you have recommendations for how to sort of figure out, obviously it's very different for a graduating, you know, college senior than when you're starting a business, but how do you figure out, or how did you figure out when you were early on in the A1 auto days? Like how did you figure out who you needed around you? Maybe not as hired folks, but um, you know, counsel. As counsel as advisors. Yeah. Um, my opinion, or my, I think my, one of my reasons for success was, you know, understanding what I didn't like to do and hiring those people in to do those things and then getting where I wanted to be, but also um, just listening and, you know, where do you find that people? One of my, one of my closest advisors is my father, you know, we don't always agree, um, but one, he's a great role model for me and I can follow his path. Um, and then it's a matter of just look at the people that you do business with. Um, and there's nothing wrong with asking somebody, hey, do you mind for one hour every twice a year? Just let me share. And that's, that's, the, that's the great thing about these eight questions in that two-page document. If you bring some advisors, advisors around you, they can, this is just an easy thing for them to review 
really quickly and really understand what you want out of your business. Um, and, and, you know, the, the advice I give is yes, find people that think differently than you do um, because they will give you that, that contrarian input um, and, and you have to be open. I mean, the most, the most, there's, there's successful people that are hard drivers and do things exactly the, the, the way they want to. Um, but I think the most successful people are the ones that are open to input, put what I call coachable. Um, they're, they're open to input. They're always looking for, um, you know, looking to improve themselves. Um, and they get input from different places. You know, the, the chamber is a great place to meet people for advisors. Um, go to a chamber event and meet a few people. Um, there are all kinds of different referral groups and things like that out there. I'm happy to, I'm always happy to be a resource for any of that stuff. Um, I do what I do um, and I get paid to be a professional EOS implementer because that helps me, but I also love just connecting people with resources that they need. Well, and so along those lines, you very generously sent me a book. <laughs> which is on my list. I, my dad gave me a book for Christmas that I haven't read. I, well, I started, but that I'm sort of trying to work my way backwards. I just gave my mom back a book that she well, loved me about a year ago. So let me tell you, now you can probably skip the first three chapters. So just, <laughs> I, I, I saved you some time too. So. Well, but so, you know, what are other places? What are, what are some of those books or websites or daily emails or are there other suggestions you have that yeah, can so coincide? For, for anybody who, that's on the call, I'm happy to send you a book like I sent Kate. Um, it's called Traction by Gina Whitman. Um, and there's a there's actually a series of these books. Um, I don't have. There's How to Be a Great Boss. Um, this, I mean, this is kind of a handbook that I use to help people get more from their businesses. Um, I like Patrick Lencioni is a great author. Um, the, the Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Um, Stephen Collins, who wrote Could Be Great and uh, um, Built to Last. Um, and, you know, just kind of a little bit of a plug for EOS. What EOS is, is it's just kind of pulling a lot of those great resources together and those great ideas and theories and putting them into an actionable model. Um, but, you know, for anybody that wants to, to contact me in any way or whatever, happy to. Um, another great book that especially as you grow your business and you start to create some wealth for yourself um, is called finish big by Bo Burlingham. Um, that's a, that's a great book for anybody actually really to start starting a business because it, it gets you thinking at, at a higher level about your business. Uh, one I always recommend. All right. So Karen is with us today. I'm going to allow Karen to talk. So let's see how we do this. Hi, Karen. We so Karen, we should be able to hear you. Hey, Hey Mike. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. You sent me the book uh, like a month or two ago as well. Awesome. Um, you, and you probably haven't had a chance to read it, which is fine. I, I did start it. I haven't finished it. So um, a lot of what you're saying today is, um, you know, I think I, I read the introduction in it in the first chapter too, and I know there was an overview about all this. So I appreciate the, the webinar. And just for me, you know, trying to think of a question to ask you, I guess my mind is kind of where I've been with my business. So I've been in business for seven years, but I've done the sort of typical entrepreneur thing where it gets pushed to the side because I'm working for someone else while I had this idea to grow my business. And um, this year I've really been able to elevate the business and take it to the next level. And I think a lot of these tips have been helpful. I think for me, and maybe you've seen it in coaching people through this, it's trying to prioritize, like as silly as it sounds, like the core values. Um, I find myself writing down what's important to me and comparing it to how I felt in the beginning when I started and really wasn't sure what I was doing starting a business. Um, and I feel like I'm constantly reprioritizing um, and then I get distracted and then it's like, oh wait, how do I get this message across <laughs> when ultimately everything's really the same and I probably just need to keep it simple. But, yes. um, so I don't have a, a specific question, but I thank you for the advice and sharing the stuff that you've sent to me already. Yeah. So there are five leadership abilities that we teach. So what you're talking about 
in a, in a way is hitting the ceiling. So first, a, a couple of things to, to give you is um, you, what you do need to, to decide is what can you devote to your living? Is that five hours a week? Is it 10 hours a week? Is it 20 hours a week? You, you just have to be honest with yourself of what you want to do and, and how much time can you, can you devote to it. Um, and then in those five or 10 or 20 hours or 40 hours or however hard you want to work, what are the things that you're really good at? Um, and then I love the, the, the word you said of, of simplify. Um, what, you've, what, you're, what you've run into is a, a ceiling. All companies hit the ceiling. Okay, it's just, it's, it's just a natural progression. Actually, there's a study done in the 60s, the evolution and revolution of business. All companies grow, they hit a ceiling, they either break through and keep growing, or they just kind of flatline, which is maybe where you are as you've kind of flatlined, or they unfortunately bottom out and they, and they die, which happens to a lot of businesses. But there are five leadership abilities that help you break through those ceilings. Um, simplify is the first one. You, you do have to simplify things. We as entrepreneurs, and I'm, I'm a natural complicator, when you complicate things, that makes your business less scalable. Because when a new person comes in and they see complication, they can't add to your business as quickly. So you have to simplify. Um, so the, the five leadership abilities are simplify, delegate, okay, which is once you have people around you, getting to your unique ability, right? So figuring out the stuff that you like doing, doing more of it, and then the stuff you don't like doing, passing off to somebody that does like doing it. Um, delegate, then there is predict. All right, and we look at predicting in the long term, which is 90 days and greater, and the short term, which is 90 days and less. You have to get very good at predicting. Um, this helps you predict here. This is all about long-term predicting. The issues list and the quarterly lark rocks are more about short-term predicting. Um, then there is systematize. You have to systematize your business, um, which is not every process, documenting every process. It's documenting the six to 10 core processes, the, you know, your HR practice, which is the people you want around you, your sales practice, your sales process, um, how you deliver your goods or services, your accounting process, your customer uh, satisfaction process, just documenting those six to 10 core processes. And then the last one is structure. You have to structure your business. And there's a great tool we use called the accountability chart. Um, that helps you put the right structure in place. Right now, you are a, a, a business of one, um, but okay. If you if you do want to get serious about this business and grow it, what's the next piece that you need in your business? You know, is it another? I see it's any three sixty business, any three hundred and sixty fitness. So um, obviously, it must be a fitness business. So is the next seat you need? So right now, you're sitting in this seat, which is everything, right? Which is working on the business, working in the business, what's the next seat you need? Is that a, um, you know, maybe you want to be the instructor. So maybe you need to hire somebody to manage the business for you so you can do the instructing because that's what you like to do. All right, and that's, and that's where, to Kate's question, that's where people kind of can mess up. They see the business start growing and, they don't realize, hey, I like doing the fitness instruction. I don't really like the management of the business, but they think the easiest thing to do is hire a fitness structure, fitness instructor, and then they get caught managing the business. Well, you know what? If they really wanted to grow faster and quicker, they should have hired a business manager and been that great fitness instructor that they are. So it's, it's, it's things like that. So that was, you didn't ask a question and I didn't give you an answer. I just gave you a bunch of information. So. That's great. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. Uh, if we have any other questions, definitely let us know. Um, it's so fascinating to think about, right? I mean, it, it comes up all the time, right? That it's hard to sort of step away. I find it even, you know, the chamber isn't my business, but it's so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and the operations to actually take that step back. Um, because it just, you know, I mean, it's October, right? Time just keeps going by and it really takes that concerted effort. Yeah. And this is the time when people are thinking about, all right, what's 2021 going to look like? Um, and, you know, that's the, 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 the businesses that, that do this have fared much better during COVID because 
they had the tools in place to make the adjustments they needed to make. Now, I'm very blessed. My business actually went up during COVID because more people were home. They're buying auto parts, I guess. I'm not really quite sure the, the psychology behind it. Um, but other businesses weren't as benefited. Um, but when you have the tools in place, um, that accountability chart that I talked about, you know, adding seats, you can also quickly remove seats, but under, understand that the important stuff that needs to get done doesn't just get dropped and your company just really fails. Um, so it, it actually helps using good foundational basic tools helps you not only grow, but in times that you need to contract doing so in a controlled manner. All right, so here's a bit of a random question for you because I like the people stuff, right? That's sort of my yep. name, the relationships and the people. So if you could start any business and you, you know, you probably have no intentions of it, but like if you could just, I have a brother who's an attorney and has always wanted to be a gym teacher, right? He's never going to do, do that, but that's sort of been his dream. Like if you could start any business, um, what would you do? Start any business, what would I do? Uh, well, I, I did start a business helping other businesses grow. Um, I love cars. I am a gearhead. Um, something I probably didn't say before, um, but um, my first memories are of helping my dad restore his 1966 Pontiac GTO, and I'm, ho I'm handing him the wrong size wrenches and stuff like that. Um, so I, I like cars. I, I like how cars, in, in ways, bring people together and things like that. So, and I have thought about some type of, of business that helps. Because I'm, I'm an auto parts person, but you know something, and I don't know what it is, but something that helps people enjoy enjoy driving more. I, mean, I don't know what that is, but uh, it would be it would be if I started a business right now, it'd be something around cars or boats or planes, anything that <laughs> unfortunately anything that you know it's not great, but anything that burns gas, you know, figure out how to burn gas better. Right. Get more energy out of it. So maybe hovercrafts. You could throw hovercrafts in there. <laughs> I know. Hovercrafts are definitely not the most efficient vehicles. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah, pretty niche, but no. Um, that's really interesting. I've often thought about a bakery. Like I, I don't. I have no actual plans to do that, and I don't even know that I like to bake that much. I just love, you know, the idea. And when you go to a place, so much of it too is how well things are done, right? The presentation and the service. And so I'm just in awe of people that do some of those things really well. So that sounds like it'll be fun. Yeah. So it's funny you mentioned bakery because I think there's, I could be wrong, but I think there's a Patrick Lencioni book that's called the, the Five Obsessions of an Extraordinary Leader, but I might be way off. Um, but it, it actually kind of has a great analogy of a person that starts a bakery you know, she has this, she has this idea of, she loves making pies or friends say, oh, you're so good at this. You should start a business, which is how so many businesses get going. And then three years later, she finds herself working 80 hours a week making pies because she doesn't spend the time to work on the business, not in the business. You know, she comes in at four o'clock in the morning and just starts baking. And then it's, you know, nine o'clock at night and she's having to do paperwork. And that's just the, it's the it's it's what happens a lot and if i can help people not do that you know people just have to they, you really have to believe and understand that spending some time and like i said five days a, a year um, and 90 minutes a week working on your business not in your business can help so it's back to your original question i mean that's where you can start just Really, if, if, if anybody that watches this or is watching it right now, put five days on your calendar that you're going to take yourself out of your business, okay? Your business will be there the next day, all right? And guess what? If you're so frustrated by your business and you take a day off and your business isn't there the next day, that could be the best thing that ever happens to you. <laughs> so just think of it that way. Um, I, I know that's kind of hard to say, but it could be the best thing that ever happens to you. But your business will be there the next day and it'll be stronger because you spent that day working on it. Um, and then again, 90 minutes a week. Um, if your business cannot survive for 90 minutes without you in it, then, you know, you don't have a business. You've created yourself a job. And if you're happy with that, then that's fine. If you're frustrated, you have to work on it. You can't just be in it all the time. 
And it's so interesting when you talked about the pies. When I was younger, I played a whole bunch of different musical instruments and people used to always ask if I was going to somehow study music or go into that career. And I used to tell them, I mean, this was, you know, junior high, um, that I wanted to keep it fun, right? I wanted to keep it as a hobby and not turn it into something that I had to pay my bills with. And right. And so it's, um, it's just interesting to think about, I often wonder, like, will you love it as much when you have to do it as you did when it was just for fun? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, if anybody searches for, say, just ex for example, um, replace a Chevy truck taillight. Um, if you do a Google, Google search for that, you will probably find a video of me in 1A Auto gear, because that was one of the things that propelled us forward is we now have, I think, five or 6,000 videos that show people how to replace the parts on their car. And that was one of my ideas. I'm like, all right, we're selling parts, but do people understand how to install them correctly? Um, and that became actually our, our core focus went from you know, selling auto parts to helping people solve their automotive problems, right? Um, and so I, I created all these videos, but then I found myself um, either working or managing people working on cars and then I have a couple cars at home. I would come home and I'm, I, the last thing I'd want to do was change the oil or mess around with one of my cars. And I decided th that actually was another business that I built within the one auto business, but I, I gave that away. I said, okay, somebody else take this because I, it's great. I, I love it. I want it to grow. I want thousands of videos, but um, I don't want to be involved in that anymore. I want to go build something else. Yeah, and when it's yours, you can sort of make those decisions, right? All right. Well, thank you, Mike. This was fantastic. So helpful. And I know that it's going to be a great resource. We do record them and put them on YouTube. So I know it's going to be a great resource for folks. So just tell us how people can get a hold of you if they want more information. Um, so you can either uh, contact me at mike at ascendadvising.com. And that's the website, uh, Ascend Advising A. S C E N D A D V I S I N G ascendadvising.com. Um, you could actually actually go to EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system, EOS worldwide. If you did find an implementer in Nashville, you would find me. Um, and you can call me at 603. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll give my I'll give the number I remember is 978-973-2149. Uh, happy to either call or text or however anybody wants to get a hold of me. Perfect. That's great. Thank you so much for today. Thank you to those who joined us. I hope you enjoy the rest of your beautiful Thursday and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, everybody.